Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. If you have been away for a while, or if you're a visitor this morning, we trust you will feel welcome in this place. And uh, be assured that your presence among us enriches our worship together. Uh, as far as announcements, uh, first of all, I I've been away, of course, for the last three weeks, I believe. Just getting back, and during that time, a couple of significant events happened in my life. One sad and one happy. Uh, as many of you know, my brother passed away, our eldest brother. And uh, that service is going to be taking place next Saturday in northern New Brunswick. And uh, so I will be away next Sunday. And I give thank Brian for taking the service for me. And uh, as my brother's request was to have myself and my sister, who also is a minister in Edmonton, Alberta, uh, we will be uh, doing the service. And it's not an easy task, so I trust you will keep, keep us in our, your prayers. And the other happy occasion was I just came back from Ottawa celebrating our granddaughter's first birthday. <laughs> so that was wonderful. Um, Lynn has an announcement to make on behalf of the uh, Outreach Committee. I think most of the announcements were on the screen. I don't know that I need to draw attention to any of those, but just take your sheet home with you and uh, give attention to those that interest you. Good morning. Once again, this Christmas, the Outreach Committee is sponsoring less fortunate families in our neighborhood, providing gifts for the children. When we considered the families the congregation has looked after for many Christmases, we thought perhaps people might wonder how we decide who we would help. Our initial beginnings started with the pantry visit because at the time there were not many resources that people could access when providing lunches for their children. We then decided that we would offer a superstar, superstore with a gift card once a month. We soon realized that many of these people who came once a month needed more than just the monetary gift. They wanted companionship and support and a chance to talk with other adults who were facing the same difficulties that they were. We were able to increase the gift cards from $10 to $25 each month. Although in this age that does not buy very much, they are always very appreciative and show them that our congregation is a caring one. They are, family, they are the families that you support at Christmas time. Sometimes we are asked why we do this, and the answer is very simple. We do it for the children. So to that end, we will again be offering Walmart or Regent Mall gift cards for gifts for the children and a Superstore gift card for the parents to buy much-needed groceries. We also plan to provide a turkey for each family. If you can help with any of these items, it would be very much appreciated. Cash donations will also be gratefully accepted. Income tax receipts can be uh, provided for these donations. Members of the committee will be in the auditorium today and next Sunday, the 27th. And that Sunday, uh, we would like to have all our donations in so that we can get the gifts ready for the families. Uh, the mitten tree is going to be placed in the narthex this week. So uh, if you want to, uh, it'll be here next Sunday. So if you have any scarves or hats or mitts, socks, anything like that that you would like to donate, either bought or handmade, um, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Uh, if we have things left over once the families have gotten what they need, uh, we will be taking them to a transition house because they uh, have a great need for things like that as well. At this time, we also are providing blessing bags to the John Howard family on Main Street for a total of 12 residents that we look after. These bags are filled by donations from various local companies uh, 
as <clears throat> such as Princess Otto and Tim Hortons and, and some others um, have been donating to these bags so that they are well, well received as well. Um, we, so we would like to thank you in advance for your cooperation. If you do have any questions, um, you can ask us in the auditorium. Members of the Outreach Committee will be there. Or you can phone myself or uh, Ella Brown and uh, we'll answer any questions we can. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. It's a very <coughs> worthy program. Wonderful ministry from our church. Are there any other announcements? Anybody else need to make an announcement? Okay, the order of service today is, is a bit different. Uh, today's worship marks the last Sunday of the Christian year, the Sunday we name as the Reign of Christ or Christ the King Sunday. So today we celebrate Christ's reign, which is here among us, and yet is to come in all its fullness. This Sunday leads us directly into Advent next Sunday, the beginning of a new church year. So today is a little bit like New Year's Eve for the church. Um, I, I'll have a little more information on the service as we, we get underway. But I do want to acknowledge the land. We acknowledge the land to show our gratitude and as an act of reconciliation. So as we gather here this morning, let us pause to remember that in this region where we live and work and worship on lands that are by law, the unceded territories of the pre predominantly the lands of the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, and Passamaquoddy. So may we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. light, and there was, and it was good. In another beginning, the light in Jesus of Nazareth shone into our darkness, but the darkness could not overcome it. I believe that in every beginning, God says, let there be light. When each of us began to be, God said, let there be light. At our birthing and our homecoming, God says, let there be light. And there is, and was, and ever will be. And there is no darkness that can overcome it. I invite you to stand for the responsive call to awareness. <coughs> God's word became a person and lived among us. We thank God for coming in Jesus and pray that we God became a person and lived among us and was a servant. O oh God, make us Christ's servants, so that we may serve one another. God's word became a person who lived, died, and is alive forever. This is true, and we are all invited into Christ's kingdom, coming on earth. Recreate us in your likeness, O oh Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, as we trace the life of Christ, may we be born anew in his birth, be baptized in his spirit in baptism, face temptation with his life living in us, receive his call to be disciples, face our mortality in his death, and know eternal life in his resurrection. We pray in the love of Christ. Amen. You may be seated. I just fail to offer a note of thanks for all the expressions of sympathy that I have received from uh, some, some of you in this uh, congregation. So thank you very much. Very much appreciated. So this service this morning follows the life of Jesus. Normally we get a little snippet of Jesus' life. At Christmas we get the birth, Easter we get the death and resurrection. 
Baptism Sunday, we get his baptism. We get a little piece of it throughout the year, the church year. Today, you're going to go through the whole, a whole uh, life of Jesus, the, the key, key spots or key notes that, uh, of Jesus' life, uh, from his birth through his ministry on earth to his death and resurrection. And we're doing this by means of narration and music. The service will proceed unannounced. Uh, there's going to be quite a bit of singing. Please just remain seated for singing. And just pay attention to the screen for your cues. There are some other places where you will come in uh, to uh, add to the service. So in Jesus' life, God redeems all of our lives and gives us new life in the kingdom of God. Come, let us celebrate. I invite Tom to come. Tom is going to be. Tom and I will be the narrators for the uh, for the service, and Don will read scripture. So we will begin with a little Tom. <laughs> Jesus, the Holy Family fled as refugees to Egypt, 
The reason for their flight was to escape the jealous wrath of the cruel King Herod. After Herod died, the family moved back to Palestine, to the little town of Nazareth. In Nazareth, Joseph supported his family as a carpenter. As far as we know, Jesus was only out of Nazareth once during his childhood, and this was to go to Passover in Jerusalem. He was 12 years old at the time. It was his bar mitzvah, like our confirmation. It was during this time they lost Jesus. While Mary and Joseph look for Jesus, the conversation might go like this. Jesus, Jesus, where are you? Where did that boy go? I thought you were looking after him. No, you were supposed to be looking after him. All of a sudden, Jesus appears. There you are. Where have you been? We've been looking everywhere for you. We were so worried.
baptism, Jesus went into the Judean wilderness in order to be alone and to contemplate what it meant to be the Son of God and what God was calling him to do. Jesus knew he was the one who was to bring God's kingdom on earth. How was he to do this? He is tempted to bring them into the kingdom by giving them free bread. He answered this temptation by using the words of scripture, which said, No one can live by bread alone. Human beings need a spiritual dimension to life. In his second temptation, he thinks of using sensationalism by impressing people with his stunts. He answers this temptation by saying, It is wrong to test God. It is wrong to win people to God by using sensational stunts. A third temptation for Jesus was the temptation to use force. Perhaps he could get an army and compel people to follow him. Jesus knew that, that, that forced followers are never real followers. His answer to this was, We shall worship God and serve only God. In other words, we must put our trust in the loving ways of God and not use force in winning people to the kingdom. After these temptations, Jesus was even more firm in his resolve to bring God's reign through love and reconciliation, no matter what it took, even if it meant death on the cross. Jesus would win people through love. Let us pray together. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne. O merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more dearly. Amen. Their names include 
Mary Magdalene, Johanna, Susanna, as well as many others. Jesus, the living Christ, through God's Spirit, still calls you and me to be a disciple. <laughs> When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, <clears throat> to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Where there's no truth in you, make me a 
self-centeredness and walk with him towards God. Jesus said he would make every sacrifice to bring all of us into a loving relationship with God and one another.
to wash the feet of the others. John's Gospel says none of the disciples would do this. Each thought that this was a lowly service was beneath them. So it was Jesus who washed the feet of the disciples, saying, I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You, then, should wash one another's feet. The supper continues in the manner of a Jewish Seder. During the meal, when it comes time for the drinking of the third cup, Jesus makes some changes to the Seder ritual. He gives the bread and the wine new meaning. He said of the bread, This is my body. Here is the meaning of the sacrament. It is something usually an ordinary thing which has acquired a meaning far beyond truth itself. It is a sign that it points to something larger and greater than itself. This piece of ordinary bread, baked by ordinary hands, <clears throat> brought to the table by ordinary people, points us to the body of Christ, broken on the cross by ordinary people. He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant made at the price of my blood, which is shed for you. saying, 
He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. In the taunts of priests and soldiers, there seems to be a bitter truth. If Jesus was indeed the King of the Jews and God's chosen one, what was he doing crucified on a cross? The bitterness of their jibe sank deep into the soul of Jesus. Could his life have been wasted? Mark and Matthew say, say that in his agony, Jesus called out, My God, why have you forsaken me? Still, it was not defeat. On the cross, Jesus gave the supreme revelation of what he had said to his disciples. The one who tries to save his life is the one who loses it. The person who gives his or her life to God will save it. This is at the heart of the Christian gospel. It takes sacrifice to bring forgiveness <clears throat> out of death. The forgiving God brings life.
third day, he arose from the grave. On the way to the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, Salome, and Salome were downhearted, filled with grief. Who, they wondered, would roll away the stone so they might anoint his body with the spices? And they found, as they reached the tomb, they found the stone was rolled away. They could not have moved it themselves. This is a work of God. The power of God opens the door, and the Christ whom we try to crucify steps forward. We cannot explain how it happens. We can only stand hushed by the mystery, jubilant with gladness. The accounts of the evangelist, the Gospels, all differ in details. The real witness to the Gospel of Resurrection is not found in arguments, but rather in the lives of his disciples, both then and now. Power was let loose, such as could have come only from the certainty that Jesus was alive again. Changes took place for which only the resurrection could account. The disciples, as all Jews did, had worshipped on the seventh day. Now they worship on the first day of the week, Christians. The Last Supper might have been repeated as a sacrament of memory and mourning for the crucified and dead. Instead, it became a Eucharist, the sacrament, thanksgiving for the one who Peter would proclaim at that, that Pentecost as being loosed from the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. In truth, the reign of God has begun and all were invited to enter the kingdom of love and righteousness. For the one whom Peter would proclaim at Pentecost was loosed from the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. In truth, the reign of God had begun, and were all invited to enter his kingdom of love and righteousness.
Then will the king say to those at his right hand, Come, you blessed by the Creator, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. So I was Going to offer an offertory prayer and prayers of concern and the Lord's Prayer. As is our custom, our offering plates are, are in the entryway as you, you come in to worship. And if you forgot to put something in and would like to put something in, please do so on your way out. And you know there are other means if you want to support the church that you can do so by visiting the office, by mailing in your offering, and um, or e-transfer. So let us pray. Creator of all, from the beginning we have been blessed with gifts beyond imagination. Until the end may we share from our abundance, offering our thanksgiving and our gifts. Gifts as healing, as hope, as joy for all the world. Eternal God, from the beginning of time to the end of eternity, you have chosen to use your power and majesty to love us and redeem us, to shape us as your people. And for that, we are truly thankful. Spirit of the living God resting upon us, may your power inflame us with your peace. May your peace touch us with your grace. And may your grace fill us with your hope. And may your hope lead us into your kingdom. Today, not only do we pray for ourselves, O oh God, but today we lift up the needs in our world. We are bold enough to pray for the end to conflicts and that peace and justice might prevail in those places of unrest in our world. Today, we would remember all those for whom life is a struggle, the homeless, the hungry, the bereaved, the lonely, the destitute, the sick, those awaiting surgery, and those awaiting treatments, those awaiting test results, and the imprisoned, and all those whom society pushes aside. Help us to meet you, Most Holy One, in your realm that is all around us and within us. Empower us to do our part to make your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. God in community, holy in one, may your word be on our lips as we pray together, as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
different kind of king. And on this reign of Christ Sunday, we are invited to remember that the kingdom of God, or the reign of God, to which Jesus pointed us, is as fully available now as always, as it was 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> the question remains, each reign of Christ Sunday, is whether we will choose to live as if the one who reigns is not Caesar, but God. May it be so. Just before we have the, the benediction, uh, commissioning a benediction, uh, I've just been reminded that there's coffee time, so please come to uh, the auditorium and, and enjoy some coffee. They might have something else to go with it too. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to Tom, Don, and, and uh, Heather, and our people in the back here for, for participating in the, helping us make this service come to be. Thank you. Inquire as well. So we have a, a responsive commissioning, and so we say, go into the world in peace, be brave, keep hold of what is, be good, never pay <coughs> wrong for wrong, encourage the faint hearted, support the weak and the distressed, give due honor to everyone, be always joyful, pray continually, give thanks whatever happens, for this is what God in Christ wills for you. We be all grateful for our God, speaks to us through the life and teachings of Jesus, and calls us into the church. And now may the peace of Christ dwell within our hearts, the love of God embrace our very being, and the power of the Holy Spirit guide our every action, this day and every day. Amen. <laughs>